is seasonably unseasonable as we come down from the sky into historic Sholkoff Field here in Ithaca, New York, high above Cayuga's waters for the 60th renewal of the lacrosse rivalry between Syracuse and Cornell University. Hello again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drive Poultry, and we welcome you to our cable cast today on Cable 13 in Central New York and home team sports in the Capital Region and the Middle Atlantic States. It's a game that on paper looks like it's all Syracuse as the Orangemen are ranked number one in the country. But, Dale, this could be the day, the kind of day in which a number one team gets knocked off. We talked about it on the way down, Dave. I think it's the perfect setting for Cornell. Syracuse is ranked number one. The weather and the field conditions are a little bit marginal. Syracuse is not at home in the Dome. Uh, I think uh, it, Richie Moran is the other intangible we got to throw in there. I think it's, uh, it's a day that Syracuse had better watch it or they could get upset. Richie is a fiery Irishman who has concocted some uh, defensive strategies that he thinks may be able to slow Syracuse down, especially, I think, in bringing the ball upfield. Absolutely, and they're going to employ multiple defenses, things we were seeing more and more this year. A team used to be either man-to-man -man or zone. Now they're mixing it up a little bit, and we'll look for Richie Moran's Cornell players to mix up defensively, try to get Syracuse's offense rattled, and anything you can do like that to offset Syracuse's scoring machine, uh, that's going to be in their favor. Cornell plays well at home. They're 3-0. and They're beginning a, a five-game homestand. They're coming off a big win over Yale, and from an offensive standpoint, the Big Red has a reliable performer now in Ed Cook, who was a senior, originally a transfer from a Nassau Community College. Definitely. He was an All-American, Junior College All-American. He had some firepower. He goes after the ground ball. So Eddie Cook from Levittown is one of the people we should look for for Richie Moran's Big Red. Also, Aaron Jones on the other side on the defense. He's been here all three years. I think he's only a junior. He's coming along very strong defensively. He was an honorable mention All-Ivy performer last year. So look for him uh, maybe to draw the best uh, assignment on Syracuse. There's a real Long Island flavor to Richie Moran's team. Now, defensively, Cornell has held four straight opponents under 10 goals, but Syracuse in winning six games in a row and overall averaging 15 goals a game. So whether Cornell can keep the defensive pressure on really should be the story in this game. In terms of Syracuse, they have so much uh, firepower. And, you know, one of the toughest things in sports, I think, from a physical standpoint, is being a midfielder with all the running you have to do. And Syracuse has two midfields they can rely on. Here's one of them. Mark Brannigan, Chris Rossi, and Neil Alden is the second midfield. And these are the guys you don't hear a lot about, but they do a lot of running. And then the other guys, the big stick minis, these are the guys that go in and take the ball away after Syracuse has lost it. They play defense, and they help out Jimmy Guyery there, the, uh, the rookie goalie for the SU Orangemen. I think the close-in defense and the big stick minis have been a big part in his success so far this year. One other factor in this game to consider is Syracuse plays usually indoors on a perfectly level artificial surface field. Now this field here today at Sholkoff is a crown field, so the balls tend to pick up speed toward the sideline, and it may be slippery in that direction too because the field is wet. It snowed overnight. There were about three inches of snow in the area, and so we'll see whether the weather plays a factor. It is windy, and it is quite cool today. Syracuse and Cornell, the opening face-off and the starting lineups coming up after these words. Everything in nature has its own trademark, and so does the taste of Genesee beer. The trademark of the rough grouse is the way he drums his wings. And the Genesee trademark is consistent premium quality, because it's made in just one brewery. No wonder they call Genesee beer the great outdoors in a glass. And try Genesee Light. You won't believe it's a light beer. I'm a real beer drinker, and Genesee Light's a, a good-tasting beer. Where did you hide the calories? So you want to play the game, then you've got to go to the Varsity Sports Shop, the largest supplier of lacrosse equipment in central New York, including Brian's famous shotgun and super light, or STX Excalibur or laser light, plus helmets, gloves, and pants. Everything you need to play the game, any game. Varsity stocks a complete line of sporting goods and supplies, fine athletic footwear, and school jackets. Mention this Cable 13 ad and take 10% off anything in the store. Varsity Sports Shop, Vernon Avenue, just west of Midler. And now let's meet the starting lineups in today's game between Cornell and Syracuse. Starting on the attack for Cornell, Ed Cook with nine goals, nine assists. Bill Hughes, nine and eight. Kevin Finneran, six goals last game, 12 goals and four assists on the year. The Cornell midfield, Frank Kelly, nine and two. Tom Gunderson, seven goals, nine assists. Tony Reese, seven and seven. And the Cornell defense, Tom Vivian, Aaron Jones, and Steve Poletta. They'll be integral parts of the Cornell defense playing in front of the freshman goalie Paul Schmoller whose brother John played for Syracuse and his father Lewis was a goalie at Cornell 
back in the 40s. And here's the Syracuse attack. Tom Corey, 25 goals, 20 assists. Tom Nelson, 15 and 10. John Zilberti, the freshman, 16 and 16. The midfield has Rhett Cavanaugh back in the lineup. Five goals, three assists. Eric Jeschke, six and five. And Todd Curry with 12 and 12. And on defense, Kevin Sheehan, Dan Pratt, and Jeff Desco. The Syracuse defense playing in front of goalie Jim Guyrie for Syracuse, who has stopped 67% of the shots directed his way. We'll be back with the opening face, Syracuse and Cornell, right after this. On a hill overlooking Cayuga Lake, dominating the landscape of Ithaca, New York, since 1868, Cornell University, a unique blend of the public and private sectors, a land-grant university and an Ivy League institution. Students from all over the world come to work in classrooms where more than 35 languages are taught, research laboratories, and in the reading rooms of one of the largest university library systems in the country. Future engineers, architects, labor negotiators, poets, find themselves together challenging each other with different perspectives. It's a place to explore, a place where one can find a unique combination of disciplines that stimulate the intellect and encourage scholarly research and professional career preparation. Cornell, always a place for dreamers, welcomes new visionaries to a university created to provide access to all useful knowledge. It is a picture postcard day, but it is a long pants day for the players and long johns for the spectators with temperatures here in Ithaca, New York in the upper 30s and a gusting wind which perhaps you can hear right now in the background making things rather unpleasant for the uh, spectators and as you get a look now at the leading scorers for Syracuse Tom Corey bidding to become the all-time leading goal scorer for Syracuse then John Zilberti, Gordy Mapes and Todd Curry right now the two teams meeting at midfield as they eyeball one another Syracuse dressed in the road, orange jerseys, and Cornell, they're home white with red numerals and red trim. This is the 70th meeting between Syracuse and Cornell. Syracuse has won 39, Cornell 29, and there's been one tie. In recent history, Syracuse has dominated the series, although Cornell played Syracuse to a very tough 12-10 game a year ago in the Dome won by Syracuse. The faceoff now, Bill Durgo will face off for Syracuse. Frank Kelly for Cornell got the ball out. And Cornell will control for the first time. The Cornell midfield, Tom Gunderson, feeding toward the box, intercepted by Mike O'Donnell and brought down. Now picked up by Dan Pratt on the rush across the 50-yard line and heading toward the box. He'll carry it in. Durgle stays on. Misplayed by Corey at midfield. Nelson separates the Cornellian from the ball. Corey gets it back. Feeds cross field, good shot and a score by Bill Durgo, the faceoff man, scoring the goal, and he is one happy lacrosse player. For Bill Durgo, that is his first Syracuse goal. And Syracuse on the board leading one to nothing. It's nice when you can keep your faceoff man in there and not have to get him out, and then he comes up and uh, picks up a ball and, and puts it in a left handed and scores a goal. Ball is on the ground with definitely an unsettled situation, and watch the ball pop over there, gets a nice pass. And then Durgle blows it right by the goalie. And Schmoller did not have much of a chance. Syracuse lost the faceoff, came up with the ground ball, and now leads 1-0 with a very short time gone in this first quarter. Jeff Doty on the faceoff. Cornell now, that goal coming less than a minute in, and Syracuse gets it back. Todd Curry wearing the long pants, number 16. Syracuse up with the... Face off by Durgle. He passes off and runs out, and now they get some first team midfielders out there. Redirected to Curry. He'll move on the attack now, moving in for a bounce shot that's wide, and Syracuse and Zilberti back there will keep possession. Not a particularly good shot, Dave, but uh, as we said, we were down on the field earlier, and that ball can do some crazy things on this turf when it's wet, and it is quite wet down there. They did not get a chance to really squeegee it off. It's clear, but it's definitely slippery. Interesting footwear being worn as well by Todd Curry as John Zilberti works behind the net, checked by Aaron Jones. Let's see what kind of defensive pressure he can apply on Zilberti. He worked hard for position, 
And we'll get a whistle to stop play. It'll still be Syracuse ball. Well, Zilberti and Jones going at it right away. Jones uh, has drawn the task of guarding Zilberti, and he did a nice job there. I think Zilberti held on to the ball, Dave, a bit too long, and three guys end up knocking him down. Of course, one was a push, so Syracuse gets the ball back. But you can see right there what Jones is going to do to Zilberti. He's going to be all over him as soon as he can. Yeah, he's very close to him now. A pair now of they made him fours. back off. John Zilberti out of West Tennessee, Aaron Jones from Long Island. And now it is Rhett Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Back he goes to Zilberti, and they swing it to Corey, playing with a long pass. Intercepted pass. Intercepted by Elizio, and he runs the Syracuse player, Jeske, off the ball, but it's knocked out of bounds, and looks like Orange will get it back. Walt Mundy, the far official, signaled that it did go off Cornell six. Eric Jeske will get the play started. He's wearing the orange knee band number 11. Cornell making a change now. They send on number 23, Mike Stefano, replacing Lizio. And now they put it in the stick of Curry. Now Kavanaugh showing no ill effect of the ankle injury that kept him out of a couple of games. Corey and Zilberti back to Corey. Corey possesses one of the hardest shots in the game of lacrosse. And now Curry. Right now, Cornell using just a simple man-to-man. They've got the matchups they think they want. Todd Francis guarding Curry. If he gets the step on you, he can really fire. Here's the shot saved by Schmoller with Kavanaugh applying pressure. And a quick outlet now to Francis. Moving toward the box, he winds. He passes in front, deflected by the Syracuse defense, Sheehan. And the Orange Sticks will get it, Dan Pratt. He redirects it to Sheehan. And now upfield quickly, Syracuse in transition. Corey signaling for his men to come upfield. Back to Curry. Jeske was open on the left wing. Absolutely. They had a mismatch for a while, but uh, they wanted to settle things down, get back in the offense. And Francis, 37, was right out there, the man who started the fast break for Cornell. Here's Corey working from way outside. Behind the cage, Nelson. Top of the slot. Hard shot. Syracuse will keep it off the stick of Rhett Kavanaugh. They got some room there. They saw some daylight up on the defense and were able to get the ball up. But the poor shot does not give Syracuse much of an opportunity to put in, but they do get the ball back. Second midfield comes on for Syracuse with the addition of Donahue. It's Rossi, Rannigan, and Donahue who've come on. Syracuse pass intercepted. Good defensive play back there in the corner as of Steve Paletta intercepted. Now Cornell legs it upfield. Aaron Jones meets a double team, goes by Donahue, gets by Rossi. Now he'll head back across as Cornell gets uh, some more midfielders with offensive skills onto the field. Gunnarsson has it, number 32. Ed Cook cuts toward the goal. Here's Gunnarsson working against Donahue. Also coming on the field now is number 24, Frank Kelly. Cook is number 10. And the man with the ball right now is Hughes, Bill Hughes, 13. He's one-on-one -on -one there with Sheehan, who's going to let him come by, and they got Desco now on Cook. Cook still controlling. Jim Guiry has not had a shot directed his way yet. We're nearly four minutes into the first quarter. Outside. Finneran handled it. Now they swing it around. And here is Kelly. Working for a possible shot. Angle is cut down by the Syracuse defense, O'Donnell. And now Gunnarsson has it. Changing directions nicely. Gets the left-handed shot. He beats Gyre. He shook free of the defense and ties the game at one. It was not a particularly hard shot. And it was just well placed. Dan Pratt slid over 36 right there when the defenseman. Too late to help out Gyre off to his right-hand side as the ball was... As I say, well placed, not especially hard. And that ties it up. One apiece. That big red come up with an important goal. We'll see it on the replay. There's the move by Gunnarsson, and he takes a left-handed shot as it went over the right side of Jim Guyery. And for the senior midfielder, his eighth goal of the year, he has 17 points. Very balanced. Cornell scoring. Bill Durgo working hard off the face. O'Donnell is contesting for Syracuse. 
And it's loose on the sideline. Durgle was shoved out of bounds. So Syracuse will get it on the technical. A little pushing and shoving after the play involving uh, Durgle and Todd Francis. And Richie Moran starts right away talking to the officials to make sure he gets a call later. Uh, Cornell really hustling for the ground ball on that. They actually beat Syracuse to it. Unfortunately for Cornell, it went off one of their sticks, or excuse me, they were detected pushing, so Syracuse will get the ball back. Brett Kavanaugh, far side to Corey. Behind the cage, and not a good pass for Zilberti, who was out of position. The second poor pass in a row, uh, the one that started that all off for Cornell a minute or so ago was a poor pass that was intercepted. That one went out of bounds, was not even close, and Syracuse is not in the dome, and it is wet and cold down there, Dave. Bert and Bedwini come on, part of that big stick uh, midfield contingent. Michael Donnell in there as well. And you can see that it works both ways. It's Tom Nelson. He feeds the crease. There's the score. A bad misplay by Cornell, and John Zoberti comes up with a goal. Syracuse 2, Cornell 1. It was not a very good pass, and when it was down, they did a nice job of getting the ball to Zoberti, who was right out in front of the cage. With, and that puts it at 2-1. With that goal by John Zilberti, you'll look at it again. His 17th of the year, he ties a Gordy Mates for second on the team. Ball was on the ground, scooped up, and a nice pass. Jeff Doty on the faceoff against Durgle. This is a typical Bill Durgle face. The ball stays on the ground. And Cornell comes away with it after the call. 2-1 to one game, Syracuse and Cornell. You know, we talked to Richie Moran about faceoffs before the game, and he said, you know, sometimes that's not very important what you do after you have the ball. And as we've said before, Syracuse has been able to take the ball away from people after losing the faceoff. We'll see what happens this time. One casualty already. The scoreboard is blown out. No score, no time posted. The official time being kept on the field. Bill Hughes moving on the Syracuse defense. Checked by Kevin Sheehan. Outside now, Nick Lanta, number 19. Cummings cut through. Lanta. Man, Bedwini takes away the angle for his shot. Outside it goes to Bob Cummings. Dan Bolger, number seven, cut by, gets the feed, looks for the shot, he scores. He came off the screen and he beats Jim Guyrie with a left handed shot. We're tied at two. Bolger, a senior at a Beth Page High School on Long Island. Number 33, Burt was beat on that watch. It's just a simple move. He just goes left-handed after he gets the ball back. There it is, and just a quick stick. So quick we almost missed it, but it went by Guyrie, who is not having so far what I would call a stellar day in the cage. He's only had a couple of opportunities, but uh, that one he maybe could have had. And off the faceoff, Cornell with another opportunity. The feet in close. Intended for Cook, who is right in front of the crease. And now Syracuse comes away with it. Jeske, nice job of getting it out, but they're going to make a mistake. And this is the kind of game that Richie Moran wants. Force Syracuse into making errors and then capitalize on them. Bill Durgle trots off. Richie Moran in his 18th season at Cornell. And no matter what the record is, these games are always close. And Richie Moran is... I think satisfied with the way this game is going. We've got the clock back. Under 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. Fairly high scoring game already for these two teams. It's 2-2. Cornell works it with uh, Tim Mulligan 11. Now Gunnarsson 32. And Kelly moving on Bedwini. He gets the angle. He shoots and Gary down for the save. Lost the rebound. Michael Donnell has it. Pressure though from Gunnarsson. Yeah, they're going to pressure Syracuse. They're going to ride them and really put the pressure on and see if they can't force some mistakes on the clear. Good catch in midfield by Marty Stottlemyre in the game. He's quadruple team, but he gets it back, and Syracuse does a good job of redirecting it, but the white shirts are staying close. Absolutely. Now Syracuse gets it down into the box. Zilberti back out of the box to Kavanaugh. They'll slow it down now, Dave, I think. They want to get some people out. They want to get Sheehan back on defense and get a... Midfielder back in there. Now Sheehan comes across and Jeske steps on the field. Number 11 will be coming in your picture right now. Important strategy there, Dave. We talked to Richie Moran and I said, are you going to pressure Syracuse? And he said, well, that's one way to go at them. But uh, there are other ways. But they did on that time and uh, Syracuse was able to break the pressure. Corey Cavanaugh, now Curry. 
He winds up for his hard shot, switches hands. Behind the cage, it's Zilberti. Now Gordy Mapes. And to the point. Blistering shot by Rhett Kavanaugh, and Syracuse keeps it. The thing was impressive about that is Syracuse moved the ball well, Dave. They had the rotation going. They got the ball whipping around. They weren't making any mistakes on the passes. They got a shot off, and they backed it up, so they'll get another opportunity. This is the kind of offense that uh, Coach Simmons wants to see out of his Orangemen against Cornell. Cornell playing very close, even behind the cage. Man for man by the Big Red. Gordy Mapes will work one-on-one -on -one going against Paletta. Mapes. Nice. Over the top, it's legal, and they take it away from him. Paletta did a nice job. Checked him with the handle, went up over the head, and checked him with the handle. Good job. Up Four field, pass. and out of bounds, the goalie Schmoller trying to hit Paul Keener, and he threw it out of bounds, a pass going about 50 yards. Now, that's the Syracuse side here, basically, at Sholkoff Field. The side where the wind is at your backs. The Hardy Souls are on the far side and the Crescent. Syracuse just back over their own midfield line, but they run it in, and uh, they won't have any problem with that. 2-2 two two lacrosse game. Eight minutes to go, first quarter. Ball is lost by Kavanaugh, taken away. Kavanaugh chopped at it, and he commits an infraction, so Cornell will get it back. A little bit of a push there. Uh, Cornell will get the ball just outside the box, so they'll still have to clear it. We'll see if Syracuse puts pressure on them. We have seen that happen when Cornell had Syracuse clear, and they put a lot of man-to-man -man pressure on it. John Desco and Roy Simmons III there on the sideline. Both teams are on the near sideline. Aaron Jones. You want to we'll force? Send it back to Paul Schmoller. He is a big goalie at 6'2", 200 pounds, or 180. Still big by goalie standards. They want to force. They got a little L cut coming up with number seven, Bolcha, but they don't go for it. And the goalie comes out. Now he's got to be concerned about passing well. Lanta overthrows uh, Cummings. Cornell keeps it on the far sideline. And they get it in the stick of Bolger. He's got one goal already. O'Donnell stays with him. Now they play Cornell loosely behind the cage. Here's the move by Hughes. Sheehan sends his big uh, stick out. Knocks it away. You leave that Body, Body's up on him, and Syracuse comes away with it. Desco, nice bounce pass to Gyrie. Over to Sheehan now, and Syracuse is going to have to clear, and they're going to feel some pressure. Sheehan hacked on the sideline. That's clean. He tries to get it back, He's and he sends slash. his stick right into the midsection of Ed Cook. Not even close. What the hell is this for? That wasn't even close. That was too obvious. It was right in front of the official. I think you let the first one go because they'll give you a little little bit of a chance when you come down with that stick, but the second one obviously went right into the body of the Cornell player, and that's going to cost Syracuse a minute, and let's see if they can take up this opportunity and pick up on it. A very disgusted uh, Kevin Sheehan knew that it was not a very smart play to make, and he got an earful from John Desco and a little bit of a lecture from Roy Simmons. Two to two game. Perfect uh, opportunity for Cornell now. And this is the pace they like. Let Syracuse make the mistakes and take advantage of them. The Big Red working it around. There's Gunnarsson. Out he goes now to Lanta for the shot. Hit the crossbar. Rebound in close. It's blocked beautifully by Gyrie. Another shot over the goal. And Cornell will keep it. That's the kind of pressure they want to put on Jim Gyrie. They got three shots off there. Two of them are excellent shots. One was an excellent save by Gyrie, but uh, he's not going to be able to sit down there like he has some games, Dave, and uh, have maybe one or two shots taken at him in a whole quarter. They just took three at him in the space of about five seconds. There was Finneran's shot that hit the crossbar. Gunnarsson out of the point. Cornell looking very good here in this man-up situation. Now Nick Lana back to Gunnarsson. He cranks, he shoots, it's wide. And Cornell keeps it. I like the Cornell's philosophy. They're going to take as many shots as they can. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Jim Guyery. And uh, as I said, they've taken four shots in about the past 15 seconds. Syracuse limiting man-up opportunities for the opposition to a 24% success rate. Cornell operates at a 32% success rate. Now Lanta. Syracuse playing down a man. Intercepted by O'Donnell. But they can't come away with it. Not yet, at least. 
O'Donnell does. He's going to lose it. Unsettled situation. Penalty is up. Syracuse is even. And now it is Burt with the ball. Burt is double teamed, taken away. Whistle stops it. That's a great indication, however, of what Cornell is going to do. They're going to contest every ground ball. And they got picked up there on a slash, I think. But you can see, Dave, the hustle of Cornell. They are going to go after Syracuse, and they're going to go after the ball. Syracuse uh, midfield huddling up. Well, they're, they're getting a little rattled, I think. Uh, maybe not that particular group, but I think Syracuse is feeling this Cornell pressure, and it will be relentless, believe me, for the whole game. It was a huddle, actually, between the middies and the attack. And now let's see how Syracuse plays it. Nelson, Curry, Gordy Mapes. Nelson out of Brannigan and Corey. Nelson to Curry. And now Gordy Mapes. Paletta came over to play him. Nobody has Zilberti behind the cage. Now there goes to Curry. His hard shot is deflected wide. And they're going to let Schmoller know that they're there too as they blister a shot past him. Syracuse with a man up opportunity now. And here comes Corey making his shot. They give Curry room. Here it comes again. It's in the net. That penalty was just about ready to expire, but they took good advantage of it and bounced it by number six, Paul Schmoller, the freshman, as you said, the big kid, 6'2", but that was just uh, a patented uh, Curry shot. And in the man-up situation, they just took it right out to the point. There's the pass, and just there's the goalie's eye view, and you can see how quickly that ball got to the goalie and by him, making it 3-2 now. It's 4-19 unofficially left in the first quarter. Bill Durgle again on a face-off, this time against Frank Kelly, Cornell alternating face-off men. Same two that started this game at the face-off. Durgle stepped on it with his right foot. In there digging for it now is number 40, Tony Reese, but it's Curry who comes away with it. Rhett Cavanaugh comes out for Syracuse. Durgle will head off. There's a lot of talking going on out there. Want to make sure they got the right offense set up. Nelson's been talking. Now they move Jeske out, and so they've got their full complement of players on. The two teams have alternated goals oh. until just oh. now. As Cur Curry scores the second in a row on the identical bounce shot, and it just got under the crossbar. So Syracuse now leads it 4-2. to two on the goal by Todd Curry. For Todd Curry, 14 goals on the year. Richie Moran's going to talk to number 40, Tony Reese, because Tony Reese said, geez, I only gave him a step. Here's what happens when he gives him a step. Ooh, he forgot where he was. You could see Reese go over, gave him about three steps, and Curry took the shot, and he will take that when he's got it, and he blistered it by Schmoller, and uh, Reese got an earful when he came out, Dave. An instant replay, and here we go again with J Jeff Doty facing off against Bill Durgle. Durgle really keeps that ball down on the ground. And now it squirts out into the possession of Cornell. Francis overthrows his man, Hughes, and Cook can't save it as he spills out of bounds on the far sideline. Good hustle by Cook. You can see the water go up as he slid out of bounds, Dave. It is still cold and sloppy down there. But a good game, 4-2. Syracuse had two goals by Curry there, and he has just played sensationally offensively. Put it this way, the water will not evaporate on this day on no. the sideline. Syracuse 4, Cornell 2, and now Cornell with a semi-ride. They're going to try to get Diary back in the game, and they're going to go right after Diary. He's 15 yards out of his cage. Gets it to Dan Pratt, who legs it across. Nice clear. Pratt's going to take it into the box and move right into the offense. He looked for a return pass from Jeske. Pratt's in front. He's down there too long. They'll take him out. Jeske's bringing it back up to the top to allow Curry's going to come over. across. Yep. Now he steps on. Jeske waits for Curry to come into the picture. There he is. Running through with a long pants. Here comes Eric Jeske. Corey's been kind of quiet on the far side there in the upper left-hand corner. Jeske feeds Curry. Hard shot. He scores again. That's three in a row. Hard shot is really a redundancy when you're talking about Todd Curry. Everything is hard, and he has scored three in a row to give Syracuse a 5-2 to two lead. And I think even more importantly than the 5-2 than the to two lead, Dave, is they've taken the momentum away from Cornell, and of course, Schmoller's got to be uh, thinking twice in the goal. Watch this. 
There's the pass by Jeske, and bam, you don't even see the ball. It goes out of there so fast. And uh, they really, I think, uh, of course, this is not the end of Cornell, but I think they've really taken them the wind out of their sails so far. Face off one quickly by Kelly. He feeds right in front. There's oh. a goal. That was a gorgeous goal by Cornell. Kelly to fitter it to Ed Cook right in front. Now that'll put the wind right back in. What a great job they did off the faceoff. Got the ball, and Finneran, 33, made a spectacular pass. We'll see it on the replay in a second, but that's one thing you've got to do, and Richie Moran's teams will come right back at you, and they did there. Very, very important goal for Cornell. That was as good a goal as you'll ever see off the faceoff, and this man, Kelly, really set it up. There was a face, there's a pass, and Kyrie had no chance for that. Great fast break. Syracuse has a new faceoff man in there now. It's Pat Donahue, five to three. We'll see if the ball doesn't come out of there quickly. Donahue a little more finesse. And there goes the ball. Yeah, does score out in a hurry. Reese with a slash or a hold against Eric Jeske. Came over the top and tied him up. Good body position by Jeske uh, running to get the ball. But Syracuse will get the ball and they're going to have to clear it. It will be way 20 yards inside the midfield line. There's going to be a timeout. So we have a timeout here at Chokoff Field. 2.25 to go in the first quarter with a score. Syracuse 5, Cornell 3. living in a place where the sports action never stops, where amateurs and professionals meet and compete in a variety of events, where four superb seasons of fun guarantee that nobody loses, no matter what sport they like, and where winning is a tradition. Imagine living in a place like this. You do. You It is a 5-3 game, Syracuse in the lead. The two teams seesawed back and forth in splitting up the first four goals of the game for Syracuse, Durgo, Zilberti, and for Cornell, Gunderson, and Bolcha. Syracuse with a record of 7-1, uh, and one. Cornell 3-4 and four coming in. They have played some common opponents. Syracuse beating Cortland easily, Cornell defeating Cortland. And as we come back to action, Todd Curry feeds the crease. And Nelson overthrew his man, so Cornell will get it back. That's the third poor pass we've seen that has not even been close to being on target by Syracuse. And they turn it right over to Cornell. But they haven't done uh, very much wrong in the last couple of minutes, especially getting the ball to Todd Curry. Todd Curry, yeah, you can't go wrong getting the ball to him. And, of course, Cornell came right back with that pretty goal just a second ago. So they're right back in it. In Curry's last game against Brown, he had his career high with five goals. Saddlemeyer took a swipe there at Ed Cook. Cornell's down five to three. They're looking to get back-to-back -back goals for the first time in this game. Way out up on top is Shoes with Sheehan. Now he drops the ball off. Syracuse choosing that man-to-man -man defense. O'Donnell. Cummings sending it back. Hughes. Real good pressure by Sheehan that time. Cornell trying to get their offense going. Nick Lanta working one-on-one. -on -one. Against Chris Bedwini. Now it's Cummings. Clock is on the field. We're into the Final minute of this first quarter. Cummings can't get by O'Donnell. He feeds, though, and Gary stopped the shot. Body Point save. blank range from Dan Bolcher. Now Syracuse looks to take advantage of an unsettled situation. Chris Bedwini, big man moving on Nick Lanta. 
Nice hesitation move by Bedwini. He should probably take his time now and get the ball back out. Cornell may take it away from him. Now they've got their offense back on. Mark Brannigan, 20. Rhett Kavanaugh, come on. Brannigan gets it down, number 20. They signal him to go toward the goal. He's moving on Finner, and he tried to feed it in heavy traffic to Nelson and knocked aside. Syracuse keeps it now. About 25 seconds left. And maybe less than that. I saw the clock come on before the scoreboard. Read a minute. So we could be down to around the 15-second mark now. Scoreboard clock is unofficial. Donahue with about 10. You're going to have to get rid of it. The feed, the shot, the score. What a great goal by Tom Nelson as he did the 360, and he beat the goalie, Paul Schmoller, in the final seconds of his first quarter to give Syracuse a 6-3 lead. Well, they, uh, they jumped out on Donahue, and uh, he got the ball. There's Donahue right there. Watch, there's the jump. And you see now there's two men. Somebody should be open. He makes the pass, and uh, they hit him too late as he just wheeled and fired and gets Syracuse there. Sixth goal with eight seconds unofficially left in this first quarter. That was just like a spin move in basketball right down the middle. And a big goal for Syracuse in the final seconds as they moved it upfield. And they converted six to three. Donahue on the faceoff again against Kelly. A whistle, illegal procedure. Syracuse will get it. We've got six seconds on the field clock, but it's, yeah, it's got to be pretty close. But if they're going to take a shot, I would assume they'd have to do it right away. We'll see if he doesn't just step across. Curry's checking on the time. He's got the ball. He's inching up. Here we go. He may go one-on-one -on -one and unfire it. There it is. And it bounced a little bit too far out in front. Two seconds. Two seconds to go. Now let's see if Zilberti just bloops it right over the net and hope for the best. They're all packed up in front. He's awaiting the official's indication to begin play. The ball, and we get an extra ball on the field. That was There's the, the rifle yep. pass, and it goes beyond the reach of everybody, and so we've come to the end of a very exciting first quarter with Syracuse leading Cornell 6-3, to three, as you watch it here on Cable 13 and Home Team Sports. Since 1870, Syracuse University has offered those seeking a higher education the opportunity to share in its rich tradition of academic excellence and diversity. Over 300 different programs are offered by the university's 17 schools and colleges. Many of the programs, including those of the Newhouse School of Public Communication and the Maxwell School of Citizenship, enjoy international reputations. Syracuse University, an education for a lifetime. They've been to the national championship game three years in a row. Will 1986 be the year that Syracuse regains the title? Stay with Cable 13 all season long for coverage of each and every Syracuse home game and key away contest at Cornell and Hobart. Curry, Corey, Kavanaugh, and Cable 13. La Creme de la Croix. After one quarter, it is Syracuse 6 and Cornell 3. A look at the ancient press box here at Cholkoff, soon to be replaced. Believe it or not, they're building an underground parking garage right under the press box on the grandstand on this side. If you've been to Cornell, it's between the baseball field and Cholkoff field. Right now, the field is drenched in sunlight. Sure is in the dome. <laughs> now they did a great job though of getting the field ready the artificial surface field yeah they sure did there was squeegeeing it. it off and yeah getting the excess moisture off the field second quarter about to begin Syracuse and Cornell with some uh, offensive fireworks 21 shots either team capitalizing in a man up situation Curry sends it back to Desco working with Sheehan and Pratt here comes the ride by Ed Cook Jim Guyrie now defending the goal at the left. Six to three after one quarter. It was a big quarter for Todd Curry. He scored three times. He's got Guyrie doing a little 
traffic directing down there as he sent Desco over on the wing. Desco is the man who got the ball right there, and Sheehan's going to go over. And he's going to take it over. Now he decides to come across. He dished it to Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh, number 13, standing on the 30-yard marker. Nice job of playing. They've got to be concerned now about Curry, I would assume, as uh, see if they're going to pick up man-to-man. Tom Corey without a goal, really without a shot so far. He'll work one-on-one -on -one now. Oh, that same check again by Paletta puts the ball on the ground. But Nelson picks it up, feeds the goal, and Zilberti missed from the narrow angle, although he had an open opportunity. Nice job by 43 Paletta with that stick check, the handle check, and that There's one's going to go way out of bounds. There's a pass, and yeah. it rolls the length of the field. Cornell throwing it from deep in their own end, trying to hit a man in midfield that rolled right past everybody. Sitterin was the only man that was there, and it took a hop past him, Dave. He didn't have a chance for it. And it'll take some time now as they, there's Tim Nelson on the sideline as Syracuse will attempt to clear. They've been pretty successful with clears. They've got seven. And uh, I thought that Cornell might put a little more pressure on them on the clears, especially Guyery. Cornell has not been hurt in this game in the transition. It's been a Todd Curry show in that sec first quarter, second half of the first quarter. Aside from that, the two teams have played fairly evenly. Just goes to show how well you can play as a team and give up stuff because of that one man. And there's Syracuse. And Desco's got a free avenue. He's coming all the way in. He shoots. He scores. That hurts. Nobody picked up Jeff Desco. And he was a little bit surprised and then decided, I'm going to go right in, and he scores. It was funny, Dave. It was like both teams were frozen. He kept looking, one, for somebody from Cornell to drop off and get him. And two, he kept looking for a man from Syracuse to put his stick up and say, you can pass to me. And nobody moved. And watch, he'll take it by himself. Mulligan was after him, number 11. And watch, he looks. He looks. <laughs> nobody there. Hey, I'll take it. And he does. And a good shot with that big midfielder stick. That may be the first goal of his career. He had two assists back in the 84 season. Jeff Desco. Younger brother of the Syracuse assistant coach, John. Syracuse, more importantly, grabs a 7-3 lead. First midfield in for Syracuse with Kavanaugh, Jeske, and Curry. And that's Kavanaugh, 13, who gets the ball down to the attack. Corey sends it back to Zilberti. Zilberti's got a large rooting contingent here. They arrived early, found the choice of seats, protected from the elements. Eric Jeske, former Henniger High School player, makes the move, beats Rippich for the shot, knocked down out of the defense. And Cherokee says, Kavanaugh comes away with it. He's got Corey behind the cage, Curry out at the top, and he overthrows Curry. Oh, it's nice knocked job. back into Ian. the stick of uh, Todd Curry. He did the wise thing. He took it back, too, and he, he ran to the open field. That's something the coaches always tell you to do. Don't be that concerned. It's a big field, you know, Dave? And he ran right out of trouble, didn't chance, trying to just turn around and get it taken away from him. So Syracuse retained possession. If there was a time of possession stat, it's definitely in Syracuse's favor now. Here comes Rhett Kavanaugh. Gets a good move to go by Rippich. He comes down the lane. His shot is wide. Well, he had a wide open shot there. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one stuff is uh, putting Cornell in a little bit of trouble. They had the short sticks out there, and they want to get the big sticks on, see if they can't match up a little bit better. And that shot that went out of bounds gives them the opportunity to get some people out there. And we want to remind you again about free tickets to the World Cup lacrosse tournament in Toronto. Just drop us a postcard. Care of McCaw Cablevision, 500 South Salina Street, Syracuse, 13202. Mark Brannigan, 20, changing hands with a stick. Zilberti faking the pass behind the cage where Mates is working now. Now Zilberti playing even with the goal. Here's Chris Rossi, gets free, shot, score. Not a particularly hard shot, but the bounce just eluded Paul Schmoller. And now Syracuse has opened up a five-goal lead at 8-3. to three. Tim Vivian, number 16 for Cornell, was guarding number 21. And we'll see Rossi's goal right there. There, there he beats. Check that. It was number 14. I want Lizio, to correct that. Lizio. I'm sorry. Out of eight face-off, Syracuse has won the last three in a row. So face-off, not a problem that we thought they might be, at least not against Cornell so far with 11-28 the second quarter, lots of face-offs. 
Cornell has held their last four opponents under 10 goals as Reese gets the pass, has it knocked away from behind. Pulled down now by Mulligan, number 11. This is probably the first time in this quarter Cornell has been into the uh, box and mounted a uh, serious offensive move. Reese backs out. Now Gunnarsson. Reese has got some speed. They send him on a isolation, maybe. Gunnarsson, hard bouncing shot. Ed Cook was back there to keep it, the ball in possession of Cornell. Redwini and Burt come on. Sun comes out again. You know, you mentioned Ed Cook. That's very important is the movement away from the ball. Everybody, of course, watches the ball in the cross, but Cook made a great move to back up and get the uh, possession for Cornell to try it again. And Beautiful ooh. feed, and Mulligan missed the shot from in close. Cornell's going to have a good run in it behind <laughs> the cage. They swipe it back to Gary. He'll look to outlet it and get this transition going. What a grab. He finds Burt with a good grab. Cross field now on the one bounce. Looks like O'Donnell's got it, 31. Boy, and that's a, that's a good trick with that big stick to handle one of those short hops on this artificial surface. O'Donnell fake going out. He comes back into the offense. They pass it just by him, and he would have been one-on-one -on -one with Schmoller had he been able to handle that. Syracuse has done that all year. They'll send somebody to the box and then turn him back, and they have gotten away with it all year. As you said, he was open, Dave. The pass was too low, went out of bounds, and Cornell will clear. Ten minutes, 20 seconds to go in this first half. Number one Syracuse against Cornell. Ten years ago, Cornell won the national championship in 1976. A team led by Mike French, Dan McAsee who was the goalie, Damon McAnini, one of the great feeders of all time. French uh, graduated as the leading scorer in the history of college lacrosse, an honor that has since gone to Syracuse grad Tim Nelson. Pratt loses it. Lizio can't get there, and they scoop it back in the direction of Vivian. Now he sends back to Schmoller. Schmoller nearly tackled behind the cage. It rolls out of bounds, and Syracuse will get it. Great, Good effort. Great effort by Keener. Keener did it, but uh, not enough. That ball was down. Dave, I think it covered about 200 yards before it finally went out of bounds. He made two diving attempts to keep it in play. And Syracuse gets it back, leading 8-3. to three. Here comes Curry. They give him room. Maybe too much room. Now Nelson. I believe last, Nelson was alone. That was a shot he took. Schmoller knocked it down. Mapes tracked it down. Here comes Curry. He uh, gives up the shot. It's Zilberti from the feeder position. Out to Curry. He cranks. He shoots. And it's wide. They have really been putting the pressure on now with number 34, Jones. He's going after Zilberti. Now they're falling back and playing kind of a zone. Curry gets about seven yards of shooting room. Zilberti, Tom Nelson, Kavanaugh, and Curry. And again, they reverse it. Yeah, now this is a little zone, and they all had the sticks up, and they tried to pass over the zone. Francis comes out of there. A nice hard pass to Cook. Desco trying to get him over the top. Brett Kavanaugh, they feed it to Lizio. There was a man open on the right side. Finneran. They couldn't get him or couldn't spot him, one or the other. And here comes Volcha. Now it goes back to Ed Cook. Nobody has got Cook. Now they're going to pick Kavanaugh's going to pick. Oh, they got somebody open on the crease. Man open at the top of the box. Bounce shot. Gary had it all the way. Rebound. Finneran. They sweep it out. And across the midfield stripe. Taken down by Zilberti. He's double teamed. He's going to he have to get rid of the ball. Oh, what a move by Zilberti. He gets back up. And he still has it. Played now by Aaron Jones. Zilberti with great balance and ball control. Now Corey. Megan Nelson. Nice run by Zilberti. Terrific athletic ability. Here comes Rhett Kavanaugh. Big right went left. Now goes right. Nelson. The feed. He overthrew one man. They still keep possession, and there was a push. Be a push, yeah. As Eric Jeske was knocked down by Dan Bolger. There was no flag. They, they signaled no possession, so Syracuse retained possession, but uh, Eric Jeske was looking like he wanted a flag. But if the ball is not in the stick, it's merely a stoppage of play, and the team that was offended will get the ball. John Zilberti heading toward the Syracuse bench. 
7.47 to go in the first half. 8-3, to three, Syracuse lead. Now they're back on a man-to-man -man up on the top, and they swing it around. Syracuse has scored the last four goals in a row in this game. Kavanaugh gets it now over to uh, Corey. Corey's taking off the long pants. Well, that crease is really clogged up there. You can see it on the right-hand side of the screen. Syracuse trying to look to feed the crease, and you can see all the traffic there, all the white and orange shirts. There you go. You see it right there. Just an isolation out the top by Jeske. He thinks better of the shot. Curry feeding Nelson. Nelson ducking under a triple team. The ball pops in and out of his stick and back in. Now Corey steps through. He shoots. He scores. They thought they had taken away the angle for the left-handed shooter, but somehow he found the upper right-hand corner for his first goal of the game for Tom Corey and number 26 on the year. Aaron Jones, 34, was there, but he just couldn't keep up with the last move by Curry. Watch, here's the pass to go across. Watch Jones. There he is. But he couldn't stop in the left hand. Didn't get much help either. And the left hand shot went in and not much of an angle. As another timeout for the Big Red. The timeout comes with 7.04 to go. And Syracuse now leading at 9-3. You know, everything in nature has its own trademark, and so does the taste of Genesee beer. The trademark of the rough grouse is the way he drums his wings. And the Genesee trademark is consistent premium quality, because it's made in just one brewery. No wonder they call Genesee beer the great outdoors in a glass. And try Genesee Light. You won't believe it's a light beer. I'm a real beer drinker, and Jenny Light's a, a good-tasting beer. Where did you hide the calories? So you want to play the game, then you've got to go to the Varsity Sports Shop, the largest supplier of lacrosse equipment in central New York, including Brian's famous shotgun in Super Light, or SPX Excalibur or Laser Light, plus helmets, gloves, and pants. Everything you need to play the game, any game. Varsity stocks a complete line of sporting goods and supplies, fine athletic footwear, and school jackets. Mention this Cable 13 ad and take 10% off anything in the store. Varsity Sports Shop, Burnett Avenue, just west of Midler. Jolkoff Field in Ithaca, where Syracuse now leads Cornell by a score of 9-3. to three. Roy Simmons, class of 1959, a former teammate of Jimmy Brown. And the lone loss for Syracuse this year was 9-7 to seven to uh, North Carolina. Ranked number one in the country now at 7-1. and one. Four years in a row, Syracuse has been ranked number one at some point in the season. Richie Moran. Long Island native, graduate of Maryland. This year his team has lost to those schools. Three and four. Very unusual to see Cornell with a losing record this late in the season. And they will still be in contention for the Ivy League crown. You can bet on that. And the playoffs. Right now they're in a little tough situation. There's Richie. Tough situation right now. Down by six to Syracuse. But as we've said in the past, that is not a large deficit to make up. Richie's never had a losing season at Cornell. The closest was a 500 year at 6 and 6 back in 1984. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypolter. As Ed Cook makes the spinning move, he feeds Finnerin, and Gyrie has the loose ball. There's a man in the crease, and Gyrie. Gyrie does what you're Maryland, supposed to do. <laughs> jumped him right in the crease. Absolutely. He got all over Ed Cook. You know, you want to make sure, you know, if somebody could, the goalie's thinking, geez, he could roll through here. They wouldn't see him. They'll get the ball. I want to make sure they know it, so he holds him right down. and. I think Gyrie has come on a little bit in this game. I think he was a little shaky early, but he seems real confident now. He's made a couple of good saves. And as we said, he's a great offensive goalie getting the clear going. You see him right there trying to get everybody in position for this clear. Although I don't like to see him handle the ball very often. If uh, Basically a stay-at-home goalie in that outlet is one of the great parts of his game. Kavanaugh took a shot from Lizio and then throws it over the head of Jeske. He did a nice job of just getting the ball off, but he was clobbered by Cornell. As I said, they are still going to go after the ball wherever it is. Kavanaugh, nice attempt, but Cornell will get the ball back. Devin Casey, number 18, was on the field for the first time, I believe, on that last ride. 
Syracuse 9, Cornell 3, 6 minutes, 20 seconds to go. You know, when we talked to Richie before the game, we were talking about the rivalry, Dave. He really likes to play Syracuse, and he really thinks it's a great, uh, great series. And a rivalry that is marked by excellent sportsmanship. Not a bitter rivalry, just a hotly contested one, athletically. Gunnarsson, on Gunnarsson touched it last, and Syracuse gets it. Gunnarsson, 32, was on the ball, really surrounded by orange jerseys. It went off his stick, and Syracuse will get the ball right in front of their bench. Todd Curry, 16, picks up the ball with a little discussion time with Tim Nelson, who is coaching and doing graduate work at Syracuse. And still a discussion involving Curry and John Desco. Now Curry, perhaps off the isolation, goes one-on-one, -on -one, works for his shot, a little change of pace shot as he was running left and shooting back right, and yeah. Tom Curry was closest to it to keep it in the orange possession. That's a very difficult shot to put any real speed on. Curry runs it in. Aaron Jones is on him. Here's the feed, oh. the shot, and the score. Curry coming in. And he has goal number four in this game, and Syracuse has hit double figures on Cornell in the first half. Curry made a great feed on that. Uh, that was just a, a perfect break by Curry, and then the pass was right on the button, and uh, what happens is that you've got 36 square feet to, to defend, and you're one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. Watch the break. There's the break, and uh, he put it right by the goalie, Schmoller. Any daylight, and Curry is extremely dangerous. Curry and Corey combining for the Syracuse goal. It is 10 to 3. Last year, Cornell lost to Syracuse 12 to 10 in the Dome. Cornell has not lost at home this year. It will be uphill from here on in. The second quarter this season has been one of the few times when Syracuse has had lapses, defensive lapses, allowing Adelphi and Delaware to get back in games after Syracuse had opened commanding first quarter lead. Well, Coach said that he's had enough of that. He wants to make sure that everybody plays for 60 minutes. There's the feed. Brannigan gets it to Nelson in close. Beautiful the shot the score. That's teamwork. Gordy Napes off the assist. Just when it looks like each man has a shot, he gives it up for a better, a higher percentage shot. And now it is 11-3 Syracuse. That was the essence of teamwork. Uh, it, it just it touched no fewer than four sticks before the ball went in. Starts off, there's Brannigan, there's the pass, another pass, and uh, there was a pass before that to Brannigan. So uh, actually four guys touched the ball before it went in, making it 11-3, and Cornell is now in a bit of trouble. New face-off man for Syracuse. That was uh, Dan Pratt, number 36, facing off? No, I believe that's number 10. Well, let's correct that. Syracuse had uh, number 10 out there on the face-off. That was uh, Leland Rogers. Leland the Hulk. Rogers, a former uh, national wrestling champion in Division Three, a transfer out of St. Lawrence. 11 to 3 Syracuse. Six unanswered goals. Ed Cook, played by Desco. Desco has a goal in the game. Now the double team, they knock the ball loose. Desco goes for it, but it's off his stick and out of bounds. Intensity has been great both ways on ground balls. And the stats are even almost. Actually, Syracuse has 14 ground balls, 13 for Cornell. But they are really contesting every time that ball hits the carpet. Once again, it is used working hard for the shot or the pass. Cornell needs some kind of offense now. Coming against O'Donnell. Bolger cuts through, gets the pass. Tough to handle. Stadelmeyer on him with O'Donnell. That's when the goalie gets nervous because you can't see the ball. Bolger and coming, swiping at it against O'Donnell. Out of bounds. Cornell ball. Lots of hustle going on down there. As I was saying, when Guyer or any of the goalies, when you see all that those sticks flailing and you don't know where the ball is, that's the time that sometimes they can fly out of there. And Guyer talking to his defense, found out where it was. And Syracuse got possession. And John Desco is... Is he a fiery sword on the sideline? Animated. <laughs> Ooh, look at four people after uh, Brannigan. Brannigan has great balance. Now he spots Donahue. He gets an avenue for the shot. And a good save made by Schmoller. Schmoller 
Norris, the first one, he's really had a, an opportunity to come out and really play on. The other ones have been point blank, and he did a nice job on that. He hasn't been getting the greatest defensive support as Keener runs it by Donahue. Nick Lanta will get the little toss from Keener, who heads toward the bench. Ripich getting set to come on. Lizio runs off as well. They try to get a break out of the uh, area where you substitute. Volcher getting pressured by Bird, who takes it away, but Volcher gets it back. Great balance there by Volcher. Out to the point. Lanta fakes the low shot, tries to move in, and he scores. <laughs> Nick Lanta with the goal. Out of a run to Coit High School in Rochester, and he went high on Guyery. It looks like there was pretty good defense, but Lanta managed to take that left-handed shot and put it by about uh, shoulder high past Guyery. At least that's the way I saw it. Maybe we can see it better on the replay. There's Lanta. Pretty good defense now. Went down low. So it is Cornell stopping the Syracuse string of six unanswered goals. 11-4 to four now. The Big Red get on the board with 3-11 to go first half. That time, Durgle in on the face against Doty. Cornell wins it. Looking to uh, maintain some momentum now. Bad pass behind Lizio. And Syracuse gets it. So they won the face and then threw it away. 3.05 left. Cornell would like to get a couple on the scoreboard, a couple of goals, then go down, maybe only down by five. Not a lot to make up. Kind of a not very impressive looking sky, though. It was a little ominous. Brett Kavanaugh, Syracuse quickly into their offense. Corey. Now Gordy Mapes against Poletta. Reversing. Can't find a man. Low shot. Oh. It's in the net. It's in the net. And somehow Schmoller looked like he never saw that shot. Well, what happens is the defenseman, the offside defenseman, slides in the cage to help out. What happened is Schmoller Jones went too far. Excuse me, Schmoller went too far over to his right. Jones was there. I don't think they expected the shot. It went between the two of them, and it was not a very hard shot, but Mapes put the right English on it and went by both of them. And you saw Aaron Jones apologizing to his goalie there, Schmoller. Watch Jones. There's Jones. He, sl he slides in, and it went by both. It actually went by Schmoller's stick first, and Jones could not help him out. A very soft shot but well-placed. Frank Kelly wins the face, loses the ball. Curry has it. Kelly works hard to get it back in a 12-4 game. Desco has it. He loses it. Unsettled situation here for Cornell. Ed Cook gets the feed. They try to feed the slot, taken away. Now the race is on. Good hustle by Sheehan, 28. And Sheehan goes down on the cinder track. Flags fly. Sheehan's going to help up. Jones. No, Tony, Reese. Tony Reese. I don't know who took the uh, harder fall there. Sheehan on the track or Jones on the concrete on the far side. There it is. Reese, number 40, who went out of bounds with Sheehan. Unnecessary roughness. Cornell getting some backup uh, goalies ready there on the sideline. John Colucci, number 35, as Syracuse takes a timeout with 2.22 to go. And the Orange went on top comfortably by a 12 to 4 score. We'll be back with more after these words. There must be 40 ways to get yourself in trouble. Get a little buzz, cuz. You got another shot, Scott. Planet Spin and Comet Splash. You're in the Discovery Center's Rotary Planetarium exploring the frontiers of modern astronomy. You take a brief look at the stars in the night sky beneath the planetarium's 20-foot dome theorem, and then travel back to the beginnings of the universe. Catch the next trip in the Discovery Center's Rotary Planetarium. Star shows daily except Monday. Call the Discovery Center at 425-9068. It's a blast. 
Syracuse took a timeout with 2.22 to go in this second quarter. And uh, during the season, we've seen Syracuse take timeouts late in a quarter or a half. And they have worked because they've gotten into their offense and got a late goal. Right now, they have a seemingly comfortable lead of 12 to 4. But the lead can change in a hurry in this game of lacrosse. Also, we'll see Syracuse will be man up as uh, with 2.22 left. You can see the score there at 12 4. Syracuse will be man up. There was unnecessary roughness on Cornell. So that timeout was probably to set up the correct man up play and see if they can try to drive Cornell right out of this game with a nine goal lead. Right now it's at eight. Tom Corey to Mark Brannigan and now Todd Curry. Curry has four goals in the first half. Syracuse inching in toward the goal and they score again. Once again, it is Gordy Mapes. Mapes gets his second goal in succession. And again, that timeout, that strategy works for Syracuse as they open up a nine goal lead of 13 to four. There's the scoreboard with under two minutes. That's the goal Syracuse wanted. And it went rather quickly from Zilberti out to Mapes. There's the pass from Zilberti and there's the shot. And there is a new goalie in there now for Cornell. That's number 35, John Colucci, David Jr. out of Yorktown High School. Yorktown, traditionally one of the uh, top lacrosse teams, high school-wise in New York State. Syracuse leads by nine, and there was a good run. <laughs> a little bit too much of a run by Steve Folletta. Too much from the back, Steve. <laughs> at the Syracuse player, Michael Donald, who bounces up with an assist from Todd Curry. Paletta has played very well, not that particular occasion right there, but very aggressive, but he's done some nice checking and has played very, very well. And he'll be back. He's only a junior. Syracuse averaging 15 goals a game, and they have 13 in the first half. We've said all year long, this is the uh, most unpredictable team in terms of scoring. It can come from any number of players, and so far today... They've had Durgles, Oberti, Curry, Nelson, Desco, Rossi, and Mate scoring. One of the things last year with Tim Nelson is that he had quite a, oh, there's a great play. And is Oberti, and the rebound is put in Mapes. by, guess who, Gordy Mate, his third goal in a row. Mapes as his third, as it was kind of an unsettled situation, and he pushed it past Colucci, the new goalie. And that makes it now 14 to 4 with under two minutes. Actually, under a minute and a half, 124 left. Gordy Mapes credited with four consecutive goals. And Syracuse leads it 14 to 4. And Syracuse will not get possession. Now Lanta will bring it in for Cornell, number 19. Senior out of Arundaquite High School near Rochester, another area that plays exceptionally good lacrosse. The New York State ball on the ground. O'Donnell, nice job. As he took it away from Cummings, and Syracuse transitions again. Corey got a stick in the head inadvertently from Aaron Jones. And who's got it? going to be Cornell Ball with a minute and five seconds to go. Back in 1974, Cornell scored their all-time record for goals in the game when they got 27 against Syracuse. And a couple of years later in the championship season of 76, they scored 24 against Syracuse. And right now, Syracuse with 14 goals in the first half against Cornell. That was a great lacrosse team in 76. It was a great championship game. It was a beautiful day. And Cornell, unstoppable. Most goals allowed by Cornell in a game was 25 against Navy back in 1946. So Syracuse definitely has a shot at that record, dubious as it might be, for Cornell. Colucci running some time off the clock, exchanging with Aaron Jones. Syracuse has at least one new face on the field, Dave Connolly, number 17. Also have Allen in, number 15. Hughes. Trying to get something mounted here for Cornell. Nice feed into the slot. Lanth's shot is high and over the cage. 
Beautiful pass from the sideline to the crease. And a nice shot, just a little high. Now the final seconds. Will Cornell be able to get one more shot off? I don't think so. Fed the crease. Not there. Long pass. And that's it. So the end of the first half. It was close in the early going, but now it's a 10-goal margin as Syracuse leads Cornell 14-4. The party's over. All over one for the road. All over for the 25,000 Americans who die each year as the result of drivers who drink. Drivers who don't realize how little it takes to turn the average social drinker into a tragedy. So please, take this advice from this station and the members of the New York State Bar Association. When in doubt, don't start out. Imagine living in a place where the sports action never stops. Where amateurs and professionals meet and compete in a variety of events. Where four superb seasons of fun guarantee that nobody loses, no matter what sport they like. And where winning is a tradition. Imagine living in a place like this. You do. Attention. The zoo will open in five minutes. My lines! My lines! I can't sleep out of my lines! Uh -huh. My makeup! My makeup! ba 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 Okay, guys, this way. Wrong way, guys. Now we can go in, Melvin. Hey, this place is a zoo. Visit your zoo and see how the stars live. <laughs> hey, man, I can't drive. I can drive? <laughs> yeah, right. I'll call my mom. Are you crazy? Nah, she really doesn't want me to drink. We have this deal. If I drink, I don't drive. She picks me up. No hassle. Hello? Hi, Mom. You need a ride? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And Richard, I'm glad you called. It's halftime at Cornell Sholkoff Field in Ithaca, New York. Syracuse out to a commanding lead of 14 to 4 on Cornell. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulter. And a little bit surprising if you just tuned in that Syracuse is leading Cornell by this margin, but Syracuse just has so many answers, and athletically, they appear to have too many for Cornell. A, a few too many horses, you're absolutely right, Dave, and a couple of things that we thought might affect them didn't. The field conditions haven't affected either team, actually. I think they, both teams were a little nervous at first, but when they settled down, Syracuse's uh, firepower just took over. They got a lot of shots, and they just, uh, a little bit too much for Cornell in the first half anyway. And the intensity has been there right from the start for Syracuse. As we said at the beginning, the conditions were ideal for an upset, if everything fell into place, but it has not so far from Cornell's standpoint, although they did split the first four goals of the game. The story early for Syracuse when it was tied at 2-2 was Todd Curry as he came up with three successive goals. We talked a little bit about Curry last week, too, because he did the same thing. He took a left-handed shot there. He just, he's almost unstoppable since he came back from that injury. He was tough before, but he seems even tougher now, and the ankle doesn't bother him at all. And that goal you saw there was the softest of the goals. The other ones were rocket shots from outside. Two bouncing goals and one line drive uh, off of his stick. So he has four goals in the first half. And we'll take a look at the uh, first half statistics and uh, see how the two teams stack up. Then we'll come back and look at the other four-goal scorer, who is Gordy Mays. 26 shots to 16, and uh, I think Syracuse, uh, that really tells the story for them. Saves 10 for Guyry. He came on strong. I think he's a little shaky early. Uh, Cornell has changed goalies. Colucci uh, finished off. We'll see who comes out to start the second half. Ground balls fairly even. Man up goals. Uh, Syracuse is two. Cornell none. Uh, Face-offs, again, not a statistic we thought it might be uh, somewhat uh, more impressive either way, but not uh, very even clear. Syracuse has had not had trouble clearing the ball. We talked to Richie before, thought that they might want to put a little more pressure on Syracuse. It hasn't bothered them, Dave. So uh, Syracuse playing very well. Cornell, I think, playing not badly, but they're a little overmatched. Syracuse had a 5-3 to three lead in the game. Then they proceeded to score nine of the next ten goals, and the key man in the second spurt was Gordy Mace out of Rochester. Little man, 
by athletic standards, but he's been in the right place at the right time throughout this game. Number three, Gordy Mays. That's a real key, being in the right place at the right time. Brannigan uh, passes the ball off, and you see he went fake low and went high, and uh, that's the kind of thing that not only uh, adds to the score, obviously, but took some momentum away from Cornell. When you're trying to make a comeback and they, and they get some goals like that, I think it really hurts them. But Richie Moran's teams, you know, you hate to be trite, but I think they're going to come back out and play a good second half, but it, it's probably a little too much for them to overcome. But I wouldn't put it past them, but I would say it's kind of a remote possibility. So it is a Syracuse lead of 14-4 to at halftime. We'll be back with a second-half face-off right after this. You know, the great outdoors and Genesee beer were made for each other. Now, isn't that an inviting glass of beer? Like a white-tailed deer bounding across a meadow, Genesee beer has a style all its own. Outdoor freshness, outstanding quality. No wonder they call Genesee beer the great outdoors in a glass. And try Genesee Light. You won't believe it's a light beer. I like it a lot, and I'm very shocked that it is a uh, light beer. Yeah. It's the first light beer I've ever liked. A toast to Genesee. Hi, I'm Brendan out of your Southwest County Ford here. Come out in the see our new showroom in Skinny Ellis, New York. There's a popular place to be at halftime here at Cornell, the concession stand, where no doubt they're doing a pretty good business in hot chocolates and coffee. They might even be able to sell some hot rum if they had a day. <laughs> it's not a real nice day for lacrosse, but if you are a Syracuse follower, I've talked to some people at halftime, Dave, and they said they've never seen Syracuse look better, and the score obviously shows it. I don't think maybe sometimes it's so much that Cornell can't do things. It's just that Syracuse seems to be on so far today offensively and defensively. There's Richie Moran, and I'm sure he had some things to say to his troops at halftime and see if they can't pick it up and get back into this game. Lots well, of time. Syracuse coming into the game wanted some second quarter intensity. They had suffered letdowns earlier. In the second quarter, they outscored Cornell 8-1. to one. And it's 14-4 to four as we begin the second half with Pat Donahue against Frank Kelly. Quickly into the stick of Curry, a foot pass to Donahue. Unsettled situation, Syracuse. Now they work it to the weak side, and the save is made by the new goalie in the game, Colucci. Great ball movement and a fine save by Colucci. Syracuse will keep it in the box. Now picked up by Corey as he goes out of the box. Donahue, Zilberti, Tom Nelson behind the cage. There's the feed behind the back shot and the score by Donahue. And a flag throw for a late hit. Yeah, that was definitely a late hit, and that was uh, that was uh, just the type of thing when you're dominating a team that you can get away with, and it was just a perfect behind-the-back shot. That was a beautiful goal by Donahue with the excellent execution of the behind-the-back shot. Jones right there on, and they slip off and uh, just not able to do anything, and you can see Jones was disgusted. But uh, He's been that way much of the game. Yeah, he's... Started out very, very tough, but uh, Syracuse, number one in the rankings, and that number one on the sideline was the jersey worn by Tim Nelson, who ranks number one in all-time scoring. Being worn today by Mark Stouffer, a reserve player. Doesn't figure to see any action. A freshman out of Syracuse plays defense. Off the face, won by Cornell in this 15-4 game. Syracuse gets it back. Curry. Three men on the ball for Syracuse. Uh, I think uh, Coach is also looking for some intensity throughout the entire game. He's got it so far in this second half. Syracuse, man up. Good feed from Corey to Zoberti, working for the shot that doesn't come. The feed to Corey, back to Mates. Now outside to Brannigan. Tom Nelson, number five, has removed the long pants he wore in the first half. Brannigan and Curry keep theirs on. There's Tom Nelson in the slot. Weak angle, narrow angle by Mapes. Going for goal number five. He gets it back behind the cage. Out he goes, top of the key, and the empty net. 
because the goalie was way out. And it is a goal for Tom Nelson. 16 to 4. Syracuse ranked number one. If they continue this pace up, will certainly solidify that. They have just looked awesome today so far. And just taking advantage of every chance they get. Here's Mapes. Makes the pass out at the point. They were man up at that particular time. And Nelson did not have to do particularly much with the ball after he got it, except put it right in the hole. Face off statistic uh, pretty even, 9 to 8, but Syracuse has looked impressive at times with the face off. Hudson on the ground ball. They lose this one. Once again, it's Kelly sending it back to Jones. In the middle he goes. The Rippich. Lizio wanted the pass, number 14. Now he gets it. Donahue is on him. Now do you stay stride for stride with Lizio, Joe Lizio? Gunnarsson now to Cook. Cook moves by the cage. Played by Desco. Finneran gets the pass now. And outside Lanta. Lizio sending back. And Gunnarsson has it. Now kind of a clear out for Cook against Desco. They're playing Syracuse just one-on-one -on -one and hoping to get somebody slip down or to see an opening and be able to beat them. But Syracuse playing very tough defensively, man for man. There's a jump right there by Cook, but Desco covers up and... They give Lanthus some room now, number 19. Good spin move for the shot, and it's played off the chest of Gyrie. Rebound Finneran, oh. intercepted by Gyrie. Just super for Jim Gyrie. He has looked great. And he made a chest save, and then uh, you can see him go after the ball. And the second one, he picked right off out of the air. Crossfield pass to Desco. Curry comes on and calls for the ball. Syracuse had been manned down. He just came in out of the penalty box substitution area, but now he'll be picked up. So Syracuse will have to go back. There's Gyrie with a pass intended at midfield. Played by Syracuse. Lost by Kavanaugh. Taken back by Gunnarsson. And Cornell now transitions. Big stick out there. Coletta now. gets it to Lanta at the top of the box. He had only uh, two men to pass to, and they were both covered. So Lanta backs it out. Waits for Cummings to come on. Gives Cummings the ball, number nine. We're three and a half minutes into this third quarter, and it's been all Syracuse again, 16 to four. They're in with six goals in the previous game. Cornell goals today by Gunnarsson, Volcha, Cook, and Lanta. Lanta played by Curry. Bounce shot. It's wide. Cornell keeps. They had their small sticks in there playing defense. Now they get the big sticks in at the at the horn. And they got Burge in there. And then number 24 for Syracuse. That's Saddlemeyer, who's been playing a lot recently. Also... But Dweeney. You hear Jim Guyrie calling out the defensive assignments, and Cornell throws it away. You hear him see, watch the red. The red ride is generally a 10 on ride where everybody on the field is picked up and played man for man, except for the goalie, sometimes they'll double him. We'll see. It's not a red ride yet, if that's what they were talking about. Desco gets a little bit of a pressure from McDevitt. And they overthrow Brannigan. Cornell gets it. Francis knocked it down. Keener has it. Looking to spot a man upfield. Tony Reese comes on, number 40. Lizio, bounce shot, Gyrie saves the rebound into a Rossi stick. They get it back to Gyrie, and he outlets it. Beautiful outlet. In the middle now, Neil Wall with a head of steam. Held it too long, and he gets clobbered. He looked left and right. Keener knocked him down, and Keener's going to get knocked and pushed. Cornell will get the ball right there. Where There's Keener, 25. Nice job by the junior out of New Canaan, Connecticut. He has hustled all game long, Paul Keener. Ten minutes to go, third quarter. Syracuse.
Syracuse in maybe their most impressive game of the year. On the road, winning by 12 goals at this point. Nick Lanta against Chris Burt. Nice two-man game. Got it to Ripich. They took away his angle. Here's his shot, and it's in. It beats Diary, who can't believe that he missed it. He didn't see it after the rebound there. I think he lost it, and he is upset with himself. In the background, the Cornell pep band with their selection of uh, Give My Regards to Broadway. Don't know the significance of why they play that particular song, but Cornell gets it on the board for the first time. It's 16 to 5, Syracuse. First time this half. Face off Donahue there is scuffling after the ball. Yeah, he raked it away from Kelly, and now O'Donnell has it. Sends it back to Dan Pratt. Took a run at Pratt. Gary looks up field. Goes to the sideline to Desco. They're going to triple team him, but he gets the pass away. Over the head of Tom Nelson, played by Colucci. He loops a pass for Gunnarsson. Gordy Mapes. Now Nelson. Double team of Jones. They oh. take it away from him. Let's see who Nelson spots. First thing you're supposed to do there is look to the middle. And he does, but good hustle. Mapes Mike overruns Cornell. the ball on the sideline. Ripich was there, number 15, but we're going to call a hold as official Munsey says it was, and Cornell will lose possession. But good hustle by Ripich, and we've got the Air Force coming up, Dave. That'll be our next game on many of these same uh, cable systems. The Air Force making a trip into Syracuse. After losing the ball momentarily, Cornell sets up to clear. Paletta, number 43, who has played very, very well for the Big Red, gets the ball up at the midfield. Nice pass for Lanta, but he's dislodged from the ball, and now O'Donnell sticks it ahead, intending for Badwini, who gets it and then throws it away, threw it right back to Rippich. A little sloppy at the midfield play. Nick Lanta feeds the slot, played there by number 20, Kevin Frank, out of James Old DeWitt High School. Gets it to Finneran. Frank in his first appearance of the game. It changed some defensive assignments. Syracuse said two men on Rippich. Lanta's bounce shot deflected high in the air. Played by Desco. He shovels it back before he goes out of bounds. Gary in the crease. A field and over the head of Bedwini. And it is a kept Saved. in play beautifully by Mace. Thought he was out of bounds. Now Cornell has it. Both teams a little bit uh, ragged at this point. Finneran finally gets it in to Lanta. Back to Finneran, takes a shot. And Gyrie's there to play it. Gyrie had a beat on that one all the way. Gunnarsson, Reese, and Kelly come on along with Mick, uh, Mulligan. One thing that's been impressive once again is the Syracuse defense, both the Big stick minis and the close-in defense. They do such a great job of handling the ball with those sticks. Right now, they're going to be tested again. And there's Gyrie. Off his helmet. I think he's got caught under his uh, chin protector there momentarily. O'Donnell gets it. O'Donnell. Oh, what a job of handling. That's a big stick. Look at that, how well they do that. And they bounce it right back to Gyrie in the corner. It's O'Donnell. Both teams change on the fly. You see how short a time they hold on to the ball. It really puts the pressure on when you're trying to create a, a, you know, a situation where you can get a turnover because they get the ball. Even the defenders whip the ball around. They got it back into the goalie who sets up the clearing attempt. Syracuse got two goals in the first minute and a half of this third quarter. And there is a clean takeaway from Todd Curry and now a later whistle. And an offside called offside. against Cornell. And Todd Curry just... Uh, Gave Ed Cook a little pat on the back with his stick because it was a real nice check. Came down, and of course, the glove, the part of the glove that touches the stick is part of the stick. Todd Curry, who will be a member of the U.S. team in the World Cup in Toronto this summer. Later on, we'll tell you how you can be eligible to win uh, some tickets simply by sending us a postcard. 
Right now, Curry with four goals in the game. Getting it to Jeske. Cornell extending their defense. Yeah, he's way out there. Todd Francis is out on Jeske. Gordy Mates has four goals as well. Played by Jones. He's working against Jones, and Jones separates him from the ball. And Syracuse steals it away. Curry taking a run at Colucci is out of the cage. Good hustle. Now Cornell tries to take advantage of the unsettled situation. They bring Bolcha on number seven. Finneran, cross field, played by Cook against Desco, who steals it from him. Sends it to Gyrie, and Gyrie gets it out to Sheehan. Sun really comes out now, and Sheehan legs it down the sideline. Sheehan with a stiff <laughs> arm against Cummings. Sheehan into the box. They feed it in close. There's Nelson. And Cornell saves it. Jones was there. They had two men there. Syracuse player is in the crease and being held there by Paletta. Procedure call against Syracuse. It was Gordy Mays. Nice play by Jones and Colucci. Here's that address for free tickets for the World Cup. We'll pick the lucky winners. Send us a postcard here of McCaw Cablevision. 500 South Salina Street, Syracuse, 13202. Getting some last-minute instructions now for the clear as with 544 left to go in this third quarter, which has gone by pretty quickly, Dave. And we're going to start right now. Walt Munsey makes the signal. Very few stoppages of play and three goals scored. Gallucci walks it up ever so slowly. Now to Paletta. Syracuse will apply the ride now as Corey comes up. Now Jones. Exchanging with Gunnarsson. And Paletta again. They go sideline to sideline. And in the middle, now Lanther gets it. Lanther run off. A lot of shots in this game. 53. Lanther against Sheehan. Looking to get the angle. But he can't. Outside of Rippich. Sheen, very good defenseman. He rips it, and Gary saves it. Sheen is just ready for you to put that stick out too far one way or the other, and he's going to go all over it. There he is, 28, the man who's played so well for Syracuse. They sure has have all the close defensemen. Danny Pratt, 36. Desco also. Ed Cook has it for Cornell. Ball down. Pratt kicks it up. You get some of the sights and sounds of lacrosse there on the sideline. The feed intended for Finneran to try the quick stick it by Gary. Picked up by Bolger. Back to Finneran. Defense deflects the ball. And Cornell keeps it. Nice job by Vivian to keep that ball in play. He knocked it back across the midfield line. In close. And a backhanded attempt by Mulligan. Offline, Cummings is checked in the corner. O'Donnell, nice job of checking him. The ball's going to roll back out to the box. Nick Lana has it now, loses it momentarily. Lana number 19. Once again, the sun blanketing the field. Lanta, bounce shot, saved by Gary. Rebound. Up in the air again. And it will go across the sideline. It's going to remain Cornell ball. One thing Gary has got to work on, and it's a tough thing to do. One thing that Tommy Nims last year's goalie did so well, David, is to stop that rebound and not let the ball get back out because it gives another opportunity to get the ball into the net. And, of course, he didn't stop that one. It wasn't a danger now, but uh, they're going to retain the ball. Cornell will get possession. Cornell will entertain a Washington and Lee in their next home game. That'll be on Wednesday, April 16th. Here's the feed. Knocked down. I think Gyrie yeah. knocked the ball around going over the, over the cage. Cornell not having much success passing from behind the cage. Not yet, at least. Mulligan has it, number 11. We're down to three minutes and 20 seconds in this third quarter. Frank Kelly. And deflected, taken away by Syracuse's Chris Burt. 
There's those big sticks in there, Bedwini and Burt, O'Donnell. We'll see if they change. They let them take a run at offensively. Bedwini has it now. <laughs> no, they're going to run them off. They say, come on, guys, give us a shot. Chris Burt and O'Donnell with a couple they, of fakes as they that? head yeah. the bench. Now Todd Curry comes on. Kavanaugh also. It's been a while since uh, Curry unleashed his shot. Let's see if it's coming up here in the final couple of minutes of this third quarter. Curry directing his team, waiting for... Fast break right Bad, there. Edwini to get off. Jeske. Jeske races on, gets the feed from Curry, feeds the slot, and he threw it behind Peter Allen, number 15. Maybe should have taken a shot, but that just shows you how the strategy coming out of the box, that if you're going to go off, and they're going to send their man off with you. And what they did is they raced, and they got to a couple of steps. Jeske did coming out of the box, and it did not work for Syracuse, but the strategy was there. So the Big Red have a chance now to clear the ball. Been, for the most part, a defensive and quickly played third quarter. Syracuse scoring twice to Cornell's once. You know, you take those face-offs out, and it really speeds up the game. Nick Lanta looking left and right behind him. As his team sets up, he goes to Cummings. Gunnarsson will get the pass now. Stadelmeyer plays Gunnarsson. There's the feed. It went over the stick of Finneran. Just like a uh, lob feed in basketball, except Finneran was not watching, and it went right into the stick of Gyrie, but Cornell gets it back. Desco applying pressure against Cornell there. Down on the field is Cummings. He kicks it out of bounds. Okay, Syracuse gets it. I was just going to say, if, if they retain possession, that they've really dominated, but they've taken 11 shots this quarter. Cornell has, and they've come up with a goal. And SU has only taken three. But they have scored twice. That's right. Once again, Karen Ryan keeping our stats here at Sholkoff Field. Don oh. Curry really wings it over the head of one player, but it's taken by Zilberti. Jones right on him, and the ball gets kicked out to the midfield. There's going to be some... There's just rakes it in again. Curry kicks it ahead. Goes around the check of Keener. Curry flips it. But he may have stepped out of bounds before he did. Maybe you call a push? I don't know what to call it. Uh, right back at midfield, it's an offsides call against Syracuse. Walt Munzee calls a push. Official on this side of the field, Jim O'Hara on the other side. Clock is on the field as we're into the final seconds of this first quarter. Cornell looks to draw even in this quarter, at least in terms of goals scored. It's been a good third quarter for the Big Red. Kelly overshoots Reese and Finneran, and Cornell gives it away. One minute left. A couple of weeks ago, we were in the Dome. It was in the 80s outdoors. Now we're outside, and it's in the 30s. Typical of life in central New York. Syracuse is going to clear the ball. Dangerous pass. They get away with it. Gary does handle that stick well, though. And a long shot that goes over the cage. Well, they they saw Colucci out of the goal. That's a smart shot. I've seen him do that before. I've seen it happen against Syracuse. Todd Curry unleashed it from 45 yards away. It was right on. It just bounced over the cage. That happens when they get the goalie out playing defense, and he gets out of the cage there a ways. And if you get a chance, they'll try to wing it past him. 30 seconds to go in this third quarter. And it is over the head of Tim Vivian trying to sneak across to the big stick. First minute, he's checked back in. I believe Eric Jeske out there, 11. Kavanaugh, 13 for Syracuse, down in front of us. With the ball is Todd Curry, 16. Now the good pass to Pratt, sticked out of his stick by Francis, number 37. 
Nice check by Todd Francis. Closing seconds here of this third quarter. Number one rated Syracuse against Cornell. The lone Syracuse loss was to North Carolina, 9-7 to seven in the second game of the year. That was on the road. 15, 14, 13. You hear the time being counted down by the man with the clock. Five seconds or less. And the shot is wide at the end of the third quarter. So it's three quarters complete and Syracuse leads Cornell 16 to five. So you want to play the game. Then you've got to go to the Varsity Sports Shop, the largest supplier of lacrosse equipment in central New York, including Brian's famous shotgun and super light, or STX Excalibur or laser light, plus helmets, gloves, and pants. Everything you need to play the game, any game. Varsity stocks a complete line of sporting goods and supplies, fine athletic footwear, and school jackets. Mention this Cable 13 ad and take 10% off anything in the store. Varsity Sports Shop, Burnett Avenue, just west of Midler. Tradition has always been at the heart of Syracuse University lacrosse. The great athletes that played on earlier teams shared the same pride and victory that my teammates and I do. I'm Brad Cox, and I played for the Orange. For me, winning the NCAA championship was an experience I'll never forget. It's hard to describe the feeling you get representing your school and the community you grew up in. Thanks, Syracuse, for all you do for SU Athletics. And this was the scene at Cholkoff Field about two hours before game time. Not quite a Zamboni, <laughs> but it is very, very effective. And you can see that the snow had totally blanketed this field. And we've had really no trouble at all with the playing conditions now as we begin the fourth quarter. Syracuse leading Cornell 16 to 5. Hughes getting by Sheehan momentarily. Sending out to Kelly. Bounce shot. Handled by Gary. Gary has come on very well since the first quarter when I think he looked a little shaky, but you can see the saves. He's had 20 this game. Nine for the Cornell duo. Colucci in there now. Ground ball stats pretty even. Face offs again even. Clear Syracuse has had no problem clearing the ball. Once again, man up goal. Syracuse doing the job, holding the opposition down to around 20%. We're in the fourth quarter, and Syracuse leads it 16 to 5. Kelly making the one on one move, and he went down for the shovel, and Gyrie was there to play. Gyrie seems to have a sixth sense about the shot because he anticipated that one, and Cornell throws it away again. In case you've joined us along the way, here's how it's been quarter by quarter. That second quarter, as you said, Dave, uh, talked about some intensity, and they really came along in that uh, second quarter. Actually, an 8-1 to one advantage for Syracuse in the second quarter. Cornell got one goal in the third, one in the first, or one in the second, and three in the first. So long pass. Taken by Rossi. <laughs> That's called a buddy pass. He eluded Keener. Now here comes Tom Nelson. He may take it. He does. And it's saved by Colucci. Colucci had it all the way. And Cornell closest to that line when the ball went over. And that will give them an opportunity to clear it. Intensity has been good on both sides. And I have to say that uh, in terms of the goal play that uh, Guyery has continued to improve and to come along as I said I thought he looked a little shaky early maybe a little nervous but he has really played very very strongly and of course with that defensive group in front of him it helps a lot but he has come up with 20 saves John Colucci the goalie is walking it up ever so slowly exchanging now with Steve Paletta they go cross field again bounce feed for Lanta mishandled but Jones is there to back it up he makes a couple of good moves and goes by two Syracuse people. And now he's checked by the third, and the orange shirts take it away. That was a typical uh, check by Sheehan. Chris Burt with a feed. 
cross field. Here's a shot Mace. by Gordy Mace. Deflected. He gets another, and he scores. So you can make the initial save, but you can't let your guard down then as Tom Nelson found Gordy Mates. And Gordy has just scored his fifth goal of the game. Well, that's important, and Colucci just had no chance. He did make the initial save. Ball bounced out, picked up by Nelson, back to Mates, and Mates put it right by him. Let's see if we can pick it up. There was the initial shot, ground ball, and then back to Gordy Mates for the goal. Andy Smith in, wins the face, gets it into the stick of Gordy Mapes quickly. Smith's going to come off. We have not seen him, the freshman out of Maryland. This was his first appearance of the game. And he leaves quickly. He's out of Phoenix, Maryland. I'm sure we'll see more of him on any ensuing face-off. Neil Alt racing on now for Syracuse. All has seen only limited action. 17 to 5. Spin move by Rossi. Brannigan's on the field as well for Syracuse. Corey, kind of a quiet game. There's the feed and a low shot by Rossi. Back at a rebound. Nelson lost the rebound this time, and Paletta has it for Cornell. Now Jones. And the change as Jones tries to get the ball upfield and runs off to get replaced by a smaller stick. He uh -oh, threw it away, but it's in close and it's in the net. There was an errant pass that somehow ended up on the stick of a Cornell player. Looks like thinner in number 33, is it? We shall see. Guy a little upset with himself, but. A well-placed shot on an unsettled situation. There's the ball on the ground. There's the pickup. And maybe Jim Guyer, a little bit too far to his left, didn't cut the angle down enough. And he'll work on that one in practice. It's tough to stop anybody one-on-one, -on -one, but those are the ones that really can do some spectacular things. He's got 21 saves out of 27 shots, so he has had a spectacular game. It is a goal for Finneran, number 13 out of the year. Cornell comes oh, back, and there's Gyrie. And there's the rebound. Maybe the save of the game right there. It was a bullet shot, and Gyrie played it. Now he tries to keep it in. He does, and he steps out of bounds as he gets it up to Curry. <laughs> and he's going to talk a little bit to Jim O'Hara, but that won't do any good, and he's going to head back to the goal. That six foot square that he patrols and has done so well doing that today. Let the last one in, but then made a excuse me, the one before last made a spectacular save, even controlled the rebound, but not able to clear it. Jim Guyry, a six one junior out of Annapolis, Maryland, took a red shirt a year ago, sat out the season, and he has looked very, very good for Syracuse. We're in the fourth quarter as you watch it on Home Team Sports and Cable 13. Syracuse leads it 17 to 6. Hughes makes the move. Fed the slot. Kelly Gary gathers it in, and he outlets it onto the stick of Stadelmeyer. He eludes the double team with a nice pass to Burt. They work it in close. Ground ball shot score. Make. Gordy Mates again, number six on the afternoon. Made that look easy. Fast break, unsettled situation with the big six. They got it over to the man right there, number three, Gordy Mates, and he picked up his sixth goal. There's the pass by Burt. Starts it off. Tommy Nelson gets the assist. As he picked up the pass from Burt and got it over to Mapes. Gordy Mapes now with 23 goals on the year, and he is actually closing in on Tom Corey. Corey with one goal in the game is 26. And Mapes, we're reminded, was not a starter in this game. 18 to 6. And now here comes Tim Vivian for Cornell. Gets it to you. People open. Center in is played by Pratt. Ball on the ground. 
<laughs> Leland Rogers takes a uh, sandwich job, and uh, but there is a push on that, and Syracuse will get possession. Leland Rogers trotting off the field, number 10, the transfer from St. Lawrence, who was a national champion in Division III wrestling, wrestled for Syracuse this year, uh, the last part of the season, won a couple matches in the Nationals, and decided he might as well play lacrosse. They've used him primarily on the faceoff. And as uh, we pointed out in previous games, he has a chance at going back to the Nationals in the sport of lacrosse, which would be uh, quite a trick to go to Ooh. Nationals in two sports in two months. Yeah, I was just going to say, Dave, it was that long pass. Here he is with the ball now, Leland Rogers. He makes the move. Uh, let me correct that. The uh, move by Cook. Nice save by Gary. Back up to Curry. Fast break, Syracuse. And Curry comes across. Syracuse works it to Pat Donahue for the shot. Just a basic right hand hard shot. Nothing from the side. He just puts it right past Colucci. And Donahue having a good game also. Now Leland Rogers comes out to take the face, but we'll look at the goal again. Just a right-hand shot. He put it right past Colucci. Leland Rogers, uh, we'll see if he does not well. We'll get a chance after this commercial or this timeout, I should say. With 9.25 to go, it is Syracuse 19, Cornell 6. A hill overlooking Cayuga Lake, dominating the landscape of Ithaca, New York, since 1868. Cornell University, a unique blend of the public and private sectors, a land-grant university and an Ivy League institution. Students from all over the world come to work in classrooms where more than 35 languages are taught, research laboratories, and in the reading rooms of one of the largest university library systems in the country. Future engineers, architects, labor negotiators, poets, find themselves together challenging each other with different perspectives. It's a place to explore, a place where one can find a unique combination of disciplines that stimulate the intellect and encourage scholarly research and professional career preparation. Cornell, always a place for dreamers, welcomes new visionaries to a university created to provide access to all useful knowledge. Dave Cohen and Dale Dreipolter at Sholkoff Field in Ithaca. Cornell on a short end of the 19-6 score. Syracuse coming up with three goals already in this fourth quarter. Cornell has scored once. And the Orange look for more as the ball is overthrown over the head of Leland Rogers, who digs for it, number 10. The New Jersey's in the game for Syracuse as well. Number 19 in hot pursuit is Steve Scaramazzino. And now bodies go down all over the carpet. Two Cornelians were down, shaken up momentarily. Brannigan faked a couple of times. Now he shoots and is saved by Colucci. Stays Syracuse ball. Mark Hotailing, number 23, will put it in play. Jeske Cavanaugh, come on. Hotelling's a freshman out of Baldwinsville, New York. As we see a lot of fresh bodies in there for Syracuse. Eight forty-four left in this game. Syracuse up by 13. Syracuse's highest output this year has been 21. They're looking for number 20 now, and there it is. Jeske. Eric Jeske scoring. And it becomes a 20 to 6 game. Jeske on just a left handed shot. Number 11, he gets the ball. There he is. He just pops it past Colucci, who went down to his knees. You know, if you get a shot out of there at Leland Rogers, if he, uh, if he faces off with uh, Doty, he's got what a set of legs he's got. <laughs> very, very muscular calves. Very muscular kid in general, wrestled 190 pounds, and he just knocks the ball out. 
Syracuse up with it. Brannigan gets it. They knock it away from him. Vivian plays it. He's nearly tripped from behind. And a nice feed up ahead for Doty. Kicked ahead onto a Cornell stick. Hughes tried to pass it before he had it, lost it. Brannigan comes over the top, steals it away nicely. I like him. Unsettled situation. Brannigan feeding Allen. Now they get it back to Brannigan and they lose it. Hughes takes it away. He got flat. Brannigan got flat. Brannigan's always hustling. He, he doesn't start, uh, but when he gets in, he goes all out all the time. He's a senior out of Camillus, West Genesee High School. He is a little pesky out there, isn't yeah, he? He is a, he's a hustler. Syracuse is going to put in a new goalie now. Joe Ryan, number six, is going to step in and assume the duties for the last eight minutes of this game as Jim Guyery is going to check out after having a real nice game. And let us know if you enjoy this and our other lacrosse games. Write us at McCaw Cable Vision, 500 South Carolina Street. Syracuse, New York, 13202. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be on the road again next week when Syracuse takes on Division Three national champion Hobart. And you'll see that game on home team sports as well. Gordy Mates back in the game, this time wearing the long pants. And that shot by Corey somehow missed the cage and rolls to the far corner. But Syracuse will keep it. Gordy Mates with six goals on the day. 20 to 6, Syracuse leads, seven minutes left. Mates feeds in close. Here's Nelson from point blank range. And Syracuse keeps it again. I've got uh, Guy read about uh, 76. 0.760 saves. That's about 76% as he stopped 23 of 31. And that's a very, very good percentage. There's Gordy Mates missing. Corey closest to it. And the sun once again really comes out, and Gordy Mates looks toward the bench and uh, the top of the box and gets some instructions, and the sun's right in his eyes. Curry to Nelson, cross field, and over the stick of Gordy Mates, and Cornell will get it now. That was definitely a pass. Hotailing comes on with Peter Allen. He's Garibazino on again. As Cornell gets ready to clear number 43 over to get the ball, Steve Paletta. Pilata with the big brace on that left knee. It has not affected his play today. He's actually played very, very well for the Big Red. Tim Vivian going cross field. Nice catch on the far sideline made by Pilata. And he hits Bolger coming across the midfield line. Bolger gets ahead of steam, not in position to shoot. Looks to feed. Switching hands. And again, faking the pass. Now he gets it. Little shovel attempt made by Finneran. That's called a shot, although it was not on the net. Phil Schluter comes on for Syracuse along with Bob Smith. A couple of freshmen, Schluter out of Pennington, New Jersey, and Smith from Fayetteville, New York. Also in the game is Mark Stouffer wearing the number one jersey. Syracuse comfortably in front, 20 to 6. Joe Ryan is in the net. Cummings on the exchange, and he throws it away, intending for Nick Lanta. Walt Brannigan to Rossi come on now. Just about everybody for Syracuse has seen action. I think they're getting ready to put in the last people that have not had a chance with 5.56 left with the 14-goal lead for the Orangemen. It is Bob Smith with the ball now. Going back to Joe Ryan. Ryan flips to the near side of Stadelmeyer. Tries to spot a man upfield. Instead, it's back to Ryan. Ryan. Way upfield. Nice pass. 
Syracuse now is a birdie. High five in the air. About 70 feet up in the air after that deflection. Stays, it was a shot, but it was deflected off the stick. Had an impetus to it, so it'll stay Syracuse possession. Hotelling over and close. And the save made by Colucci. Vivian went over the head. Hotelling took the shot anyway. Now fast break. Francis Four. legging it by Rossi. Legging it into the box. And he gets his shot away. Knocked down. The net was empty for a moment. Francis gets it back. In close. Backhander. Ryan saw it and deflected it. Good hustle by Joe. Nice save by Ryan. Steve Meyer, 27 in the game for Cornell. Under five minutes to go now. Syracuse comfortably in front. Fast break now out of the box. Reese coming on along with Lizio. Gunnarsson has it. Overthrowing Reese. That should make it out of bounds before anybody can get to it. And it does. Syracuse will get it. Exactly four and a half minutes remaining. Earl Hall comes on, number seven. Syracuse with the ball. Saddlemeyer. Smith is knocked down. Joe Ryan scoops it up. He's out of the cage. <laughs> Ryan is fair game in the corner. Up to Saddlemeyer. Up fast. Ryan gets back in, and he makes the save. Joe Ryan with a couple of clutch saves here. Clutch in terms of his future development, not in terms of the final score by any means. Hotelling against Vivian. Clock is under four minutes. Hotelling ducks under, takes a shot, and a marker down as Hotelling is buried after the shot. Check. Unnecessary roughness, illegal check. They all count the same. One minute, and Cornell will be down as Hotelling took a late shot. And that will take out Paletta, number 43, for Cornell for one minute. And a timeout taken here with three minutes and 45 seconds to go. Syracuse 20, Cornell 6. Hi, I'm Brendan out of your Southwest County Ford here. Come on in to see our new showroom in Skinny Atlas, New York. So you want to play the game, then you've got to go to the Varsity Sports Shop, the largest supplier of lacrosse equipment in central New York, including Brian's famous shotgun and super light, or STX Excalibur or laser light, plus helmets, gloves, and pads. Everything you need to play the game, any game. Varsity stocks a complete line of sporting goods and supplies, fine athletic footwear, and school jackets. Mention this Cable 13 ad and take 10% off anything in the store. Varsity Sports Shop, Burnett Avenue, just west of Midler. Syracuse leading 20 to 6, and we have 3 minutes and 45 seconds to go. Syracuse will be home against Air Force on Thursday, April the 17th. Cornell home on Wednesday the 16th against Washington and Lee. Syracuse works the ball around extra man as a result of an unnecessary roughness penalty. Syracuse uh, offense late. Operating at 45% efficiency with the extra man situations. Donahue knocked to the turf as he gets the shot away. Quickly the ball will be put back in play. It's actually the original shot ricocheted back on the field. Now Donahue, the point man, gets it back. He's really looked for his shot today. Pat Donahue. Yes. Hotelling gets it to Donahue. And here's a shot that's smothered. And it goes back to Donahue again. Dog Under three minutes to go. It's in the cage. 
Peter Allen scoring. Did not like that late push from Colucci. That was unintentional. Colucci patted him on the head afterwards. Uh, there was a crowded crease, but Syracuse able to get the 21st goal. So it's the fourth goal of the year for Peter Allen, and Syracuse hits their high for the year, equaling the 21-goal output against Portland State. There's Allen on the crease. He paid for it, but uh, that's the price you got to pay. Picks up goal 21 for Syracuse. Frank Kelly wins the face for Cornell, gets it ahead to Reese. Reese makes a nice move. Reese gives it back to Kelly, and he beats Joe Ryan. And a marker thrown after that goal as Kelly was knocked down by, I think, Jerome Hall, the uh, Syracuse linebacker. <laughs> Likes to hit a few bodies out there. That was a nice shot, and Ryan had trouble tracking it down. So that gives Cornell their seventh goal with 2.42 left in the game. Bill Durgle out now to take the face off. You, know, you can see on the sideline that Coach Desco still telling everybody where he wants them to be and how he wants them to be and what position, making personnel changes. This is the kind of thing that uh, now they're playing with one man down here. They had had too many people in there. Once again, Kelly does a great job on the faceoff. Exchanging with Hughes, we're into the final two and a half minutes of this game. Hughes overthrowing his man, Kelly, but it's kept in by Finneran. And from behind a blind side, Bert. as Burt came across, long pass. Ball is over the head of the intended man, Poletta. No snow, but there's certainly no more sun here at Shulkoff as we wind this game down. Very, very damp and dank afternoon. Which did not bother Syracuse as Cornell oh. passing the ball well now. Lanta has it, goes off the pit by Gunnarsson. Pratt staying right with him. Back he goes out of Finneran. Walks it into the box. Gets it to Lanta. Last two minutes of the game. Ryan has looked good in there. He's we'll been beaten only once. See if he gets another shot put on him with 1.30 left in this game. Cornell has not had back-to-back -back goals in this game. They can achieve it now if they can score in the final minute of this contest. Ryan gathers it in. Ryan it runs it out. out. Ryan's Express gets it to Burt. Both teams stayed on side. Ground ball shot it in over the stick of Colucci. Chris Badwini scoring for Syracuse, his third goal of the year. And with that goal, Syracuse has their highest output of the season. Now leading Cornell 22 to 7. Here it is one more time. Badwini will get the feedback. And watch, put so much on it, it goes right. Colucci didn't get a stick on it, but it hops right up over the stick and into the net at the back of the goal, and Syracuse, as we said, picked up their 22nd goal. Jerome Hall out on the faceoff for Syracuse, not able to come up with it. Against Jeff Doty. Behind the cage, so it doesn't look like Cornell will have the chance to score two in a row in this game. The Big Red will fall to three and five, and Syracuse will go to eight and one, and their number one ranking oh. will not be hurt as Ryan makes another good save. Doty Good still to play the rebound, then he had to take it away. Stouffer has it, number one, being slashed. No yeah. flag even thrown by the official as the Cornell player was right in the vicinity of the penalty box. Well, it was in his own 
defensive half of the field, so that will stop the play when that happens. And no flag, just an immediate stoppage of play, and Syracuse gets the ball and will run out this game being man up. Or should, unless they score. Half a minute.